All right, so um, we are starting topic for managing resources. Um, so we're starting off with 4.1 on energy. And we're just going to focus on these two science understandings to begin with. So this is about photosynthesis um, as well as respiration and combustion. Uh, so photosynthesis and respiration are important processes in the cycling of carbon and oxygen on Earth. In photosynthesis, the light energy absorbed by chlorophyll is stored as chemical energy in carbohydrates such as glucose. You'll need to know how to describe and write the equation for photosynthesis. And the chemical energy present in carbohydrates can be accessed by respiration and combustion. Describe and write the equation for the aerobic respiration of glucose. Just don't forget that you've got the... Um, science understandings in your subject outline. So this diagram here just summarizes the cycling and the recycling of important elements that are needed for life. Um, so namely, this is what we call the carbon cycle, but it does also incorporate the cycling and recycling of oxygen. Um, and this shows you how it moves between different components of, um, of the earth, what we call the biosphere, which has got to do with the living things, the atmosphere, which is the combination of the different gases. Uh, you've got the lithosphere, which is the rocky components, which include obviously the rocks, but soils and sediments. And you've got the hydrosphere as well, which obviously includes the water itself. Um, two of, I guess, the most important po uh, processes that we're going to be looking at is photosynthesis and aerobic respiration. So what we can see here is that we've got carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, in air itself. It has the ability to be absorbed by photosynthetic organisms, so plants as well as certain bacteria, and they will convert that carbon as carbon dioxide into um, carbon stored within their own cells and within their own tissue. And we're going to talk specifically about it storing um, carbon as glucose. Plants as well as other life forms, so animals, bacteria, um, so other microscopic organisms will need to use carbon sources as a source of energy and they'll carry out a process called respiration where they'll convert those carbon-based compounds um, and they'll break those substances down to release their, uh, the energy and it will then convert those compounds potentially into carbon dioxide. If we have a look, there's quite a few other components um, in the carbon cycle. And one thing we will eventually talk about is this formation of fossil fuels and how, I guess, humans are notorious for um, isolating and for mining and processing these fossil fuels and using them, combusting them, um, which then can lead to things such as global warming and climate change. And so that will just tie into our work back in topic one. Okay, so starting off with photosynthesis, um, I've got a point here just saying that photosynthesis is a photochemical reaction. And we looked at photochemical processes back in topic one as well with photochemical smog. So this is where light essentially helps initiate certain chemical reactions. Um, we talked about the photo dissociation of um, nitrogen dioxide, which helps um, contribute to ozone production. We know that photosynthesis requires sunlight, it requires light energy, um, and it's about converting that light energy into chemical energy. I already mentioned that it occurs in plants and other photosynthetic life forms. So that can include bacteria and phytoplankton. What I would say is important for you to note is the chemical equation for photosynthesis because like it said, you need to be able to describe and write um, equations for photosynthesis as well as aerobic respiration. So we can see here, we've got carbon dioxide gas, water typically as a liquid, but it could be in gaseous form as well. We've got our arrow to show it goes to produce glucose and oxygen. And we typically include these two conditions here. So they're not specifically reactants, but they are conditions that are needed. So we do need light energy, which we could just say is sunlight. And we also need chlorophyll, 
So the role of chlorophyll is to absorb wavelengths of light radiation. So it won't absorb all, um, I guess, colours of white light, but it will absorb particular wavelengths. And then it's those wavelengths of light that would be then eventually converted and put into chemical bonds stored within glucose. And just note the balancing of this um, chemical equation as well. So it's essentially six of everything minus the glucose, but you can see that glucose has six carbons, six oxygens, and then two lots of six, I guess, or 12 hydrogens. Okay, so let's move on to aerobic respiration. So we can say this occurs in all aerobic organisms. Um, aerobic, what does that actually refer to? Yeah, it refers to um, in the presence of or, or using oxygen to carry out some type of process. And you probably have been told that aerobic respiration is essentially the opposite or the reverse of photosynthesis. Because if you have a look at the chemical equation, you can see you basically just flip everything around. Um, sometimes what you might see is that there is energy on the right hand side as well but I would say that you don't need to include that in your balanced chemical equation just understand that this is going to release energy from the chemical bonds of glucose that means that it's a type of exothermic reaction because it's releasing energy some of it in the form of heat some of it will just be converted or transferred into other molecules or substances within cells which you don't really need to know about but um, if you've studied biology you would have heard about ATP which is kind of like the energy currency of cells so whenever a certain biological process needs to be undertaken ATP is that sort of source of energy it gets broken down into ADP in a phosphate group and that energy then gets used to carry out whatever biological process Again, you don't need to know that level of information for, for um, chemistry. We can see that this is essentially a combustion reaction because remember that combustion involves having some type of fuel source, some type of fuel source reacting with oxygen. And if it's a carbon-based fuel source, it produces carbon dioxide and water. And we're going to talk more about combustion later in this topic. Um, and we'll be looking at how we can measure the energy released from different combustion reactions. So this energy would be used for various metabolic processes. Um, so things like the synthesis of larger molecules like proteins and DNA, um, complex carbohydrates, even converting glucose into glycogen, um, muscle movement, muscle contraction, um, even using some of the heat to try and maintain body temperature. Let's move on to the next point then. Uh, so fossil fuels, coal, petroleum and natural gas have been formed over geological timescales by anaerobic decomposition of dead organisms. They're considered to be non-renewable because reserves are depleted more quickly than they are formed. Carbon-based fuels provide energy and are feedstock for the chemical industry. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using carbon-based fuels as sources of heat energy compared with their use as feedstock. So there's quite a few things to consider there. Um, I've just used this diagram again, um, so showing you the carbon slash the carbon oxygen cycle because the thing we need to consider is how components of this carbon cycle over large amounts of time as well as large amounts often of heat and pressure um, under the Earth's crust, can convert some of these substances into fossil fuels, so namely coal, oil, or petroleum and natural gas. And we're looking typically at wastes and dead organisms that can undergo compression over large amounts of time. So they get converted into fossil fuels which we know we can use them as an energy source. So burning them or combusting them to release the energy to uh, produce electricity. But we can also use them as feedstock. And we were 
I guess, introduce this idea of feedstock back in topic two. What do we mean by a feedstock? So we're typically thinking about raw materials that can be used for the manufacturing of other products. Um, so for example, and I'll talk about this later, um, but uh, crude oil um, typically is used for the manufacturing of plastics. So we're not necessarily burning them to release the energy for electricity production, but we're using them as essentially raw materials or reactants, converting them into useful products. So we have coal being a solid fossil fuel. We have crude oil or petroleum as a liquid based fossil fuel. And then we have natural gas, um, mostly consisting of methane, but then you do have other hydrocarbons as well. So I've just summarized what these fossil fuels are. I'm just reinforcing the point that they're non-renewable energy sources. That doesn't mean that they can't be generated. It just means that the rate at which we use them is faster than the rate that they're being produced. And keep in mind, this takes millions of years to develop, and we're using them at a much, much faster rate than they're being created. Um, so we'll leave it at that for today's lesson.